What is going on guys welcome back in this video today we're going to learn about the different HTTP status codes when you should use them and what they mean so let us get right into it. All right, so HTTP status codes are just numbers that servers return to clients as part of the response to the client's request. So the client could ask the server for something like show me the resource at url.com slash test and url.com in this case would be the URL of the server. And the server can react to this in different ways. Now, first of all, the resource could be there and the server could provide the resource to the client. In this case, everything went as expected and the client just gets a simple OK. And this OK is represented by a specific status code by a specific number, in this case, 200. Now, there's also the case that the resource is not there. So the, the server didn't find the resource that the client is looking for because it doesn't exist. The URL maybe was invalid. In this case, we would get a 404 error, so not found. Um, then, of course, the server could crash while looking for the resource. This would be an internal server error, code 500. And we have these different codes depending on what is happening on the server. Uh, sometimes the client might be and might not be authorized to see a certain resource. Sometimes a resource, a resource might be temporarily moved. So we have to redirect the client depending on what is actually happening on the server as a reaction to a client's request we return a different status code. And this is what we're going to learn about today. We're going to look at the most important status codes, the most important HTTP status codes, and we're going to uh, discuss which ones you should use in which situation so that you know uh, what they mean when you encounter them and so that you also know what to return in your own web applications. So for this, we're going to use a very simple uh, Flask server. We're not going to make this a programming tutorial. I'm not going to teach you anything about Flask here in particular. This is just a theory about the HTTP status codes, but I'm using Flask here as an example server that we're going to do this with. And first of all, you need to understand that there are five different classes of status codes. You have the 100s, the 200s, the 300s, the 400s, and the 500s. So 100 is the least important one. Um, I'm actually not sure if I ever heard about it before researching the codes for this video because I wanted to make sure I have all the important codes. And the 100 one actually is something that I never ever encountered. Uh, it's essentially a class of status codes that give you just some informational response. So something like, okay, understood, continue with your request. Something like that would be, would be part of the 100 class. But I wouldn't cover this class here because those are not the most important status codes. So we're going to jump right into the 200s and as I already mentioned, the 200 response itself, so 200, would be just OK. So whenever you just return something that the user is asking for, that the client is asking for, you return OK, meaning OK, it's fine. Here you have what you wanted. So actually, by default, if I have this Flask server here with the index function, which is just the default slash route here, um, I return hello without specifying any status, co uh, any status code and in this case, if I run this now, app py, and if I go to the browser and I access this and I look at the logs, you can see that we actually returned a 200 code by default. And of course, what you can also do is you can open up a second Python script. I'm going to navigate here to the same directory. We could just create a new one, test.py. Um, where what we do is we import requests. And we're going to just say response equals requests dot get, for example, and we're going to get localhost port 5000 actually with HTTP. And then we can print as a result the status code. And then we can do it like this. So actually, when I say test dot py, you can see I get the status code for the request. All right, so um, now what we can do in Flask here, and again, Flask is not the focus of this video, but what we can do is we can just add a comma here and we can return a specific code. So actually, I think I can even return a code that does not really mean anything, something like 981, I think should work theoretically. So if I now go ahead and I send a request, you can see I get a status code that does not really mean anything per se, unless you define it probably. Um, but we're going to 
focus on the important code. So 200 is the default when you ask for something, you get it without problems, without being unauthorized, without having to be redirected. You just get what you want, 200, okay. Now there's a special case here. What if you don't wanna get something? What if you wanna create something? So maybe you wanna have this route, you wanna allow for post requests and you have an HTML form that you're returning. Um, on a get request and then you know the user can create a new instance of I don't know a YouTube video idea with title description and whatnot um, and then once they click submit you create it you enter this new instance into the database and you want to inform the user everything went as expected in this case you don't return 200 you return actually 201 201 has the message name or, or, or the code name or the message created so 200 is okay, 201 is created. So when you create something successfully, you return 201. Now there's also 202, which basically means accepted. And accepted means um, it's most likely to succeed what you asked for, but it hasn't been done yet. So maybe you send something, you send an instruction to the server, uh, but it has not been processed yet. However, it is approved, it will be processed, everything looks like it's going to work but it hasn't been done yet. So in this case, you return 202. Now you can also return 204, which is no content, basically meaning um, it was done, but there's nothing to tell you here. So yes, we did what you wanted, it's done, but you won't get any response or any, any specific information here. There's no content to be provided to you. We just did what you asked for. So okay, but without giving you some content. So those are the most important 200s. Now, 300s are redirect. So when you ask for something and it isn't there anymore, either permanently or temporarily, you're going to get a 300. So when I ask for, maybe I can create here a new route, app dot, app dot route, old link or something like that. And I'm going to call this old link function here as well. Uh, now, instead of returning some content here, I'm going to say, okay, this does not exist anymore. Um, and which code exactly, uh, exactly you return here depends very much on whether this is temporary or permanently. So if I want to have this old link permanently redirect to something else, for example, to the index function, I would just return the 301. So redirect, and then I would say URL4. Um, app dot, or can I just say index? I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, probably I can just say index because we don't have blueprints here. Um, and then I can say here code equals 301 if I move this permanently and permanently means that the client can now expect to never ever find this old link again. So when the client next time wants to access a certain resource that was previously on this link, they know that this was not a temporary change. Now I can go directly to the URL because this is permanent. So I will not find what I'm looking, uh, uh, what I'm looking for here at old link. I can go directly to index uh, to the slash route. So that would be 301, a redirection. So maybe let's run this here, Python 3 app py. And now if I go, go to old underscore link, you can see it redirects here to 5000. And in the log, you can see it returned 301, telling me as a client, this is permanently. 302 would tell me this is for now. So you're redirected, but it doesn't have to be uh, permanently. So maybe this is going to change. Uh, those are the 300s. Now, probably the most well known are the 400s because the 400s are essentially, uh, I, th I think the status code that is probably the most well known even amongst non programmers is the full uh, 404 status code, the not found. So like this. And you get this automatically, I don't even have to return it here, you get this automatically when you try to access a route that does not exist. So let's keep this here at 200. And now if I go and run the server again, and if I go into the browser, and I try to access slash does not exist or something, you can see I get here 404 not found, because the resource is not found, it doesn't exist. So this is probably the most well known um, HTTP status code or error code. But we also have um, some other 
um, status codes here in this category because the 400s are the client errors, meaning that this is something that you as a client did wrong. It's not the server that is at fault here. It's probably your fault that you're not um, succeeding with what you're trying to do. So 400 would be bad requests. So let's say, for example, I have some requests that I want to send to a certain route uh, with some parameters, or maybe it's a post request. And what I do is I send a format that's invalid. So maybe I have here some, uh, how was this here? Methods equals, and then I have post. And then I submit a form. And from this form, I get, um, so, so it's basically if I import this here, request, and then I could say, request dot form and then I try to access certain key value pairs here. And the formatting is just not correct. So the data that is transmitted here was may maybe transmitted not through the web app, but with curl or something. So it is not what we're expecting here, we refuse to handle this. This would be a bad request because you didn't send the request that was expected, the format is wrong. So we're not going to uh, process this, we're rejecting it because the request was bad. It was not what we we're expecting here. Now there's also the two codes 401 and 403. And they are quite similar, but you might be confused as to what is the difference here. 401 is unauthorized, whereas 403 is forbidden. So the difference is that with this one here with the unauthorized, you basically don't even have have any authentication or authorization. So you don't have an account, uh, you have an invalid key, invalid credentials, you're a nobody essentially to the server. Whereas forbidden basically means you are locked in, you have valid credentials, but you don't have the permissions necessary to access this area. You don't have the privileges that you need to see this content or to do this operation. So this is your forbidden and this is you're not even authorized in the first place. Um, and then we also have some stuff like method not allowed. This would probably be what we get here now if I'm not mistaken. So let's just return hello here. Uh, because now I say here methods equal uh, equals post, which means that this URL now only supports post requests. Now, by default, your browser is sending uh, get requests. So if I run this here, and if I go into my browser, I should probably see now a there you go, 405 method not allowed because there is no get method um, at this endpoint here. So this is also my problem again, because if I send a post request, I will succeed, but I send a get request to a post URL. So this is not going to be uh, handled by the server. That is that. And then we also have 410, so 410 fun, uh, 410 zero, which basically means uh, that the resource is gone. So it was there, but it's now gone. It's not like not found, because not found is just not found. Uh, 40, uh, 410 means that the resource was there, but it's now removed and you're not going to find it there anymore. Um, all right, so those are the 400s. And now finally, we have the 500s. This is when something happens server side. So if I go now into one of the endpoints here, let me remove this again. And let's say that when you call index, when you visit this endpoint, what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to um, return the result of a division and this division is 10 divided by zero. So this is what I'm doing here, you're sending a get request to index, and I'm returning a string version of 10 divided by zero. Now we all know 10 divided by zero is undefined, this will give me a zero division error. But what the client will get so what the what the browser will get is just in an internal server error. So or actually, in this case, since I'm debugging, I'm seeing the error message. But probably if I set this to false, I think I shouldn't see the error message, I, uh, I should just get this year 500 internal server error. So something every time you have an exception at the server side, and you're not running this in debug mode, you're going to get just 500 server error. So something happened on the server, it's a pretty generic message. Now, we also have uh, more specific stuff here in the 500s. Let's say, for example, um, I have some endpoint, but it isn't implemented yet. So I want to offer some functionality here, maybe I have an app route, um, I don't know, 
videos or something here, but I didn't implement it yet. In this case, what I could do is I could just say not implemented yet. And I can return a 501, which is exactly not implemented. This implies usually that there will be an availability in the future. So, so at some point, you probably can expect this to work. Uh, but now it's not implemented yet. So if I run this here again, and if I go to slash, was it video or videos? There you go. Not implemented yet. And the code that this returns is 501. Uh, then we have something that you have probably also encountered at times, which is 502. Now this won't probably really apply to you in, in a simple flask application, but this is the bad ga uh, gateway. And this usually implies that you're communicating with a proxy or a gateway that got an invalid response from someone else. So this is, um, th you encounter this when you communicate with gateways and proxies. So this is just as an information here. So this is, this means that two other parties, two servers have some problem in their communication. Uh, and then finally, we have 503, which is service unavailable, which means that you have some problem, you cannot offer the service, or maybe you're in maintenance mode or something. But this just means that right now the service that you're asking for is not available. It's not your fault, but you cannot access this component. It's just not available. And usually this is temporary. So it's not something that you will see for years. Hopefully this is something where maybe you have maintenance, maybe something is going on. This is unavailable right now. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.